Good afternoon, my friends in Christ. I hope you're doing well today. Some late summer yellow cone flowers blooming. They're really looking pretty there, so wanted to highlight them. And as you can see, this is the end of the season. We used to have all these pollinators everywhere. It's kind of dismal. We just don't have um, much pretty in the garden anymore, but there are a few things and I couldn't find any caterpillars on the milkweed. They are, I have one more chrysalis and I don't see any more caterpillars. So they have may, may have already gone for the season. We might have some more eggs, but I don't know if we will. This year has not been very good at all. Um, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about the prodigal son and right off the bat I'm going to say we all know there are prodigal daughters siblings sometimes moms sometimes aunts uncles and in fact we ourselves have been prodigals I am sure of that this story comes from Luke 15 verses 11 through 32 so I won't go over the specifics of that. Uh, I trust you all mostly have heard of it. And um, if you have it, read it and ingest what you can from that great story. And um, most of you probably have already figured out the father figure that was so elated to see his wayward child come home is more than likely representing God and the son that finally came home had been humbled because he had he was reduced to having to eat pig feet and to the Jews Jews way back then pigs were really really com considered really really dirty so for him to get to the bottom of the bottom that must have been really really humbling and guess what he came home and the father was so glad to see him. He threw a big feast. He gave him a great big ring for his finger. And let me check my notes. I can't remember the things that the father was so elated. And I can only equate that our father in heaven is preparing the treasures he says he is for us. The best robe, a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet. And a fatted calf was prepared for a feast. So I think that it is representative of what we have in store for us. And this will bring up the good son that stayed behind and worked and worked and worked and took the place of the brother that just had taken off with all of his inheritance and spent it all and had nothing left. Okay, here he comes dragging in, needing some help. And the good son is saying, probably rightfully so, wouldn't we all grumbling that, hey, where's my fatted calf? Where's my celebration? I'm the one that did all the work while he was gone. But I think the difference here is that the one son that was wavered and lost it all, and he, was, he became humbled and knew he needed help. He was... He was to the bottom of the bottom, and the good son, he probably didn't feel any kind of being humble. He was just doing his job. So that's bound to represent where we have all been in this world. We will get to be humbled through circumstances, through trials, through the fires that God gives us to prepare us for heaven. We need to be fitted for God, and he does not like pride. He will not accept pride in any way. So we have to be humbled in our hearts and uh, joyous at God calling our name. And that is exactly what happened when the son came home. So you all read the story, refresh yourself on it, think up your own thoughts that the parable is bringing to your mind, put them in comments, you all take care, enjoy your blessings, and we will tomorrow, till tomorrow. Amen.